Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another large block ship that's well armed and features a teeny tiny interior, and it's called the Starhawk Railgun Frigate, which is this lovely thing that I'm currently standing on. So this is a hydrogen powered ship that features a lone drill at the front, so you can, if you really needed to, go up to an ice patch on an asteroid, drill up all the ice, and well, refill your tanks, which is a very odd thing that I've never seen on any other large ship. But yes, we've got plenty of guns all the way around the outside, we have a tiny interior that is very, very small, very compact, but it has everything you need to survive in survival mode, and it has an overall great design. So pressing F10 and finding this in the spawn menu, the Starhawk is, there it is right there, 1,634 large blocks, using the Heavy Industry Warfare 1, Decorative Block Number 1, and Decorative Block Number 2 DLC packs. We see here it uses no mods, it is survival ready, and we've got all the important stuff about it, such as its block count, what it contains, and a few little bits and bobs at the top. So simply give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a quick look around the outside, then we'll go and take a tour of the interior, drive it around for a bit, and maybe just slam it into an asteroid if no space pirates decide to spawn. So my character can now bugger off just a little bit, off he goes. And this is what we get at the very front, for the Starhawk Railgun Frigate. So right in the very middle we got ourselves our drill, which we use to collect up any kind of resource we want on our adventure. But with that is a spotlight to help light up the darkness, and in between them is a set of windows but right behind all of them is going to be our precious camera, which is going to be used to see outside the ship in first person view, and of course to precisely aim your drill and rail guns, which sit on the side. Yes, we have to move all the way around and look on the side. What we'll find is one, two, three, four rail guns on this side, then onto the opposite, one, two, three, and a four. So that's going to deal one hell of a lot of damage to whatever you point at, and well, we'll see that a bit later on. But yes, on the left, right, and below the ship, we can see a galley gun for some automated defense, and we can see two of many hydrogen thrusters go all the way around this ship. Hydrogen thrusters are the only form of thrusters that appear on the ship, so we are good for pretty much everywhere. And if we have to move around onto the side, this is all we can see. So we see some assault turrets on the top there. We see our thrusters being covered up on the side. We see some interior pillars with a red blinking light on the end of it. And if we were to look at it like so, with my light turned on, we can see all of our rail guns and how they've been lined up and how they've been positioned. Continuing all the way along towards the main body of the ship. So there is our interior pillars for the light on the side. There is our Ganning gun. Then all the way over to this section we've got a bunch of passages with some more hydrogen thrusters for our left and right hand side. Then behind our big thrust at the front we can see another hydrogen thruster to help move us forwards. Turning around over to this section. This is another hydrogen thruster to help slow us down. You want to come all the way around onto the side of it. We see some beam mocks for a hydrogen tank sitting right behind it. So we can get a good view as well how much is our hydrogen tank without needing to go into the control panel. Yes, move around towards the very back, guess what? More hydrogen thrusters, so there's another large one to move us forwards. There's more for our left and right. Around towards the very back of this thing, we've got another large hydrogen thruster, but we connect it right above there, to our dock it up, reload the tanks, reload the ammunition, and load up any kind of goods you want to carry along with you. Moving all the way up and looking down, there we go, we've got an interior turret at the back there for a bit of defense. And as we were to move along, there's another connection point for a small fighter to come along with you. And over to this section, there's our laser antenna, there's a green blinking light, there's a red blinking light, and over to there's our turrets, there's our gatling guns on the left and right hand side, there's our interior pillars with our red blinking lights on the front of it, there's more hydrogen thrusters to move us down with some little catwalks sitting in front of it, can't remember what they're called, I think they're these special passages which have the light on them, but yes, they just cover up the top of those thrusters, then move along towards the very front where I was standing, there we go, we've got some lovely blue blocks. Moving all the way down under this thing, past our spotlight, down to here, that's all we can see. So there's our Gatling gun underneath, we see some more beam blocks, we can see a few of our internal blocks, such as our beacons shining out the front there, by the time I light off, that makes it very, very clear. Put my light back on, there's another connection point. Over to there, there's our entrance in and out of the ship. There's some more thrusters to keep us off the ground while on a planet. And that's about it, the outside of the Starhawk Railgun Frigate. So yes, it looks bloody fantastic with how it's all been set up. A lot of work had been put into this, it looks bloody fantastic to fly around, especially when all the guns are firing at the enemy. But now what I can do to grab hold of my character, we're going to have a look on the inside of this, where we can actually spawn in an enemy and actually make shoot it. Be a little bit better than crashing the ship into an asteroid, you get to see all the guns firing. Down here, over to this section, this is our doorway to get in and out. So you put in the HUD for the moment, there we go, we now open and close that. And well, open that up, come inside, close that up, and now this is what we get. So looking around the room, we've got a few bits and bobs to make it a bit more homier. So there's our bed, and then got our locker, we've got a few LCD screens telling us all the stuff about the ship. So there's our power and hydrogen. On the opposite side, our weather. There's a little desk and table. Towards the front, there's our cockpit. Looking all the way up, there's a cryopod. There's a survival kit. 
And there is a cargo access for all the stuff in the ship. And yes, around this corner is our shower and toilet setup. And that's about it for the inside of the ship. Like I said, it's got a teeny tiny interior for such a large ship. But well, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it's got all the important stuff inside it. So walking all the way up to this, getting to the cockpit, first person view, this is all we can see. So we are going to be heavily relying on that camera, or of course, third person view. So bring up the HUD, third person view, these are the controls we get. When number one's going to be to fire our rail guns all together. So we're angling this like so, and then mouse clicking. There we go, that's a big chunky sound. And whatever is in that distance, going to have a bad day. As for number two, that's for our camera, this is behind all of our windows right below our drill so we can precisely aim our rail guns and of course see where we're drilling. Coming out of that and pressing number 3 that's going to be for our turrets on top to turn them on and off. Number 4 is for our gunning guns around the outside to turn them on and off. Number 5 is a master toggle for all of our hydrogen thrusters around the ship. Number 6 is for our parachute hatches to open and close. 7 and 8 is for our jump drives to change the range of them. Number 9 is to jump where we can jump 1951.92 kilometers, which is bloody good stuff we're going to do that right now. Over to time number two, then we've got controls for our drills, where number one is to take over the drill, and we can make it spin around, there we go. Number two is to turn on and off our drill to make it continuously drill, and to turn it on and off. Not too sure where the ship has gone now, let's just come back into this, there we go. So pressing number two, that now just spins around automatically. Number three, four, and five is going to be for our connectors around the ship to lock and unlock them. Number six is for our magnetic place underneath to lock and unlock them. Number seven is for our reactors on and off, eight is for our hydrogen engines on and off, and then number 9 is for our beacon, turn that on and off. And as for that, that is the controls. So what I'm going to do is make sure our signals are turned on, just in case ours and space pirates seem to be spawning in a brand new ship. I'm going to move this thing forwards. So, as you expect, we are bloody fast thanks to the three large hydrogen thrusters at the back there, and of course the two at the front, which I almost missed out. Coming to a stop, that is what we get. We are bloody fast as well, so there's no risk of slamming into anything when charging along at full speed. Moving left. And moving right, some bloody good speed with that. Moving down, a little slower than everything else, then moving up, again, some nice speed. It's very well balanced all the way around this, and should serve you very well on any other planet of any gravity. Then as for gyroscope controls, we have to come into the camera, and then start to move it around, in fact, that's really bad in that camera. There we go, we are really heavy, it certainly suits the side of the ship, certainly suits the weight of the ship, and well, you could have a bit of fun out of that. But as for that, that's pretty much it for the outside of the ship. That's it for the inside of the ship, the controls and how it drives around. So now what I'm going to do is, well, give this to the AI. Then we're going to spawn in a brand new one, give that to the space power AI. They're going to make them fight each other. And here we go to finish off this video. What I've done is spawned in a secondary ship, set up all the AI blocks, and now both the ships are going to be fighting each other. Well, until the death. Bring some like background so we get a better view of what's going on. There goes the railgun. That was a fantastic shot on the enemy ship. Or should I say the good guy ship? I'm currently in the enemy ship and they're going to slowly move towards each other to hopefully get in range of their turrets. If we're going to find the free camera and start to move all the way over to it, we're going to spin it around so we aren't on the sunlight. There goes the gun on top. Coming over to here, what damage was dealt by those rail guns? That was a nasty hit at the front there. But it looks like they are still in generally one piece and they're going to try and align each other and hopefully return fire. So here we go, more shots coming from the guns on the top there. That's a lot of bad hits on the good guy's ship. And we're going to move across over to the enemy ship once again. We now just let them go all the way across. I think currently they're waiting for their rail guns to recharge before they shoot again. But it looks like the red guys are actually going to win this one. Which seems to be part of the course. In fact, that's 2-1 compared to when I did this last time. Oh, but there we go. That was a good rail gun shot. It looks like some of the shots got deflected. And we're now in range of the interior guns, the galley guns underneath the ship. There goes all the shots. And we're just going to keep following this around. And just move it across, say, over to this section right here. So you see them sort of circling around. They're orbiting each other. And hopefully, one of these is going to be a clear winner soon. That was a fantastic shot from the rail guns once again. But it looks like they missed most of their shots. They are quite hard to aim those guns. But it looks like the turrets are going to be doing most of the work. And that poor little blue ship, that is getting absolutely shredded to pieces. But there goes all their galley guns now returning fire. And I'm not actually sure who's going to win in this one. I thought the red one was a clear winner. But it looks like the blue one is starting to fight back. It depends if their rail guns are going to get damaged or not. That's going to be the deciding factor, I think. I think it's going to be... Whoever penetrates the hydrogen tanks first. They're now slowly raising up with each other. And there's a few more good shots. But yes, now the Gallon Guns have engaged. It's going to be a bit quicker than waiting for them to get into range with each other. So they're going to do short work of all the tiny stuff around it. They should be targeting each other's weapons. And that's going to be a bad move for the Red One. They shouldn't have gone down because now they've perfectly lined up the rail guns. 
and hopefully the railguns are still functioning. I don't think so. I think there is a lot of smoke coming off those guns. And that looks like a killer blow. There we go. That is what I was expecting. There goes the hydrogen tank. I'm not sure the blue ship is going to be able to recover from that. I think they're going to be a sitting duck. Or at least until the Gatling guns get blown to pieces. If we get a closer look at this. There we go. It looks like, yeah, from the smoke, it looks like all the railguns have been disabled on that ship. We're going to come across over to the red ship. What we've got remaining, it looks like they have also been taken offline. But we still got the drill on front. That is something that has survived on one of the ships at least. And there we go. I was mistaken. The railguns are fully operational. And that was a terrible hit on the blue ship. And I think they're going to take quite some time before they actually blow each other apart. And there we go. I'm not actually sure what, I'm not actually sure what happened there. It looks like the red ship had a bit of problems. I need to realign itself. But they're getting very close to having a bit of trouble actually aiming the railguns at each other. That looks like he's going to go for a kill shot once again. It looks like he's lining up the railguns. And I think one more shot will do it on the blue ship. There we go. There goes the artillery guns on top of the assault cannons. I'm not actually sure what that turret is called. I always forget what they are. And now they're going to start to dance around each other. And it will hopefully... Hopefully start to blast each other once again. I'm not sure what's going on with the blue ship. That goes another hydrogen tank. Or even there goes another hydrogen tank. And I think that might be it. I think that's all they could do. I don't think they could drive around. They might have lost their gyroscopes. And that looks like a pretty clear winner for the red ship. There are no more shots coming off that blue ship. I don't think at all. Will they come across over to any other guns still firing? No, they're not. But there goes a massive hit from the railgun. Only one shot missed. And that is the end of the blue Starhawk railgun frigate. So yes, at the end of the day, it's a bloody good ship. It seems to have done very well in heavy combat. Even this ship over here, let's grab hold my character once again and actually get a clear view of what's going on. It doesn't look like we lost too much. It's simply a few railguns on the side. We still got our guns on the top. We lost our gatling guns on one side. But for heavy combat, that did very, very well. But yes, that's enough of me having fun with this ship. There'll be a link to its description below if you wish to download it and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. There'll also be a link to the scarbox I'm currently using, which is called Hubble Gun, made by Splitzy. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.